Hey guys, Jason with CB Customs. So if you missed the last build on, or the last video on this build, this is the 75 International with the 12 valve Cummins. You know that I kind of ran into a roadblock after it got back from painting. If you missed it, quick recap. It was running fine when it went to paint. It's got a 12 valve Cummins in it. When I got it back from paint, it was not running well. And you can see from the dust, well, let's just turn it right here. See with the Mustang too, it's just sitting here collecting dust with my wife's Mustang. I can't leave it like that. I'm, I, I wanna finish this. If you, if you look up there on the shelf, oh, there you go. Up on the shelf, you see the little grill kinda, it's already been polished, it's ready to go. The truck's ready to go back together, but I can't put it back together until I figure out what's going on with the engine. Right now, it's not running right. It's 12 valve coming, so first thing I gotta do is check compression. Um, basically kind of what we came up with is paint thinner was put into the fuel tank. That's been cleaned. We put regular fuel in it. We were able to fire it up and bring it over here. Still not running right. So we've got to check in injectors, lines, pump. All that's important, but if the engine doesn't have compression at this point, then we really can't go any further. So we're going to jump into this. Let's see if it's got compression. All right, so I popped the hood. Um, so this is a 12 valve with a VE pump. It came off in 93. Um, not real complicated for getting the injection lines off, just it's rotary, they're underneath. P pumps are a little easier, but this is what we got. A um, Couple of clamps, pull them off, and then we'll get the injector lines out of the way. We'll pull the return line off, get the injectors themselves out of the way. After we do the compression test, we'll get back over to the shop and we'll run a bench test and make sure the injectors are good. I'm going to kind of take note of uh, the number where the injectors are, just because if I find out I've got a bad injector and then it's, I also find out that that cylinder had an issue, it might lead me somewhere else. E even at that point, I'm, I'm still gonna put another motor in Got another engine on the stand that's ready to go. So if we have that big of an issue, we've got options. Um, so yeah, I'll get the lines off, we'll get the tester, and then I'll show you guys one, two, three, four, five, six, the compressions they get, and we'll go over to the bench at the shop and test the injectors themselves. Okay, so I did the, <clears throat> excuse me, quick and easy. I just took all the clamps off. I didn't disconnect it from the lines from the pump, mainly because I'm in a hurry to see what's going on with this engine. So let's check cylinder one. Oh, look at the injectors. They don't look overly bad like anything that you could see visually, but without doing a pop-off test, I don't really know yet. So that's where they're at. And we'll test them when we get to the shop. So right now, let's do our compression test. Okay, so cylinder one. I guess the lighting's a little bad. Did hit 450. Let's move to cylinder two. All right, uh, cylinder two. Again, we got to about 450. That'll work. Four more. All right, getting back in here. 450. Cylinder three, I will tell you, cylinder one and two took about five revolutions. That took about three. So that's definitely healthier than the first two cylinders. But they did still hit 450, so not stressed yet. Let's get to cylinder four. All right. 450, and we're on cylinder four. We got five and six. <sighs> yeah, still about uh, three revolutions for 450. All right, again... We're going to have 450, just under three revolutions, cylinder four. So on cylinder six, I'm going to go ahead and uh, film cranking it over so you guys can see what I'm actually seeing. Hopefully it hits 450, then we know we're just looking at the fueling system. Okay, guys, like I promised, we're on cylinder six now. We hit 450 on all of them. So I've got this thing wired up, so we're, all I have to do is hit the button over here. And we'll crank it, count to about five. That was maybe six, but 
just under 450 right at so okay so the engine will work which means we're working on an injection problem so now we get back over into our pop-off test if the injectors check out we know our problem is isolated in the injection pump so let's go check those injectors i'm gonna get i'm gonna get this stuff off the engine and put a cover over it and close the hood so my garage door doesn't hit it but we'll uh we'll get this thing running okay guys so obviously it's getting pretty late got the uh pop-off tester on the injector said 245 bar comes out to about 3500 pounds this is injector one let's see where we're at That hit about right here. That's 3,500 pounds. I'll switch the injector and we'll get to injector two. Okay, injector two is on. Sorry, I'm not doing kind of like a how to on this. This is kind of just us testing it. So we're just going through it. Uh, important thing to note if you are trying to do your own pop off test, you're going to leak diesel when you switch over. So you're going to make a mess. All right, we're shooting for 3,500 pounds. My vice doesn't hold it very well. I need to bolt the darn thing down. Well, that one works way better than the other one. I think we're going to retest number one if all of them act like that. We may have a problem with injector one. Let's get to injector three. Okay, guys. Number three is doing the same thing as number two. Looks pretty good. I think we're going to jump back to number one because it wasn't acting like that. Okay, guys. I threw injector number one back on so we can see the difference. And... See how cons inconsistent that is? Spraying goofy. Injector number one is bad. Let's jump to number four now because we already did the rest. All right, guys, number four. Pump it up real quick. See what it does. Definitely better than number one. All right, let's move on to number five. Okay, guys, number five. Number five looks really good. Let's go to number six. Okay, last one, number six. Number six looks good. All right, I'm going to get it off and we're going to figure out what we're doing. We need a game plan at this point. Okay, guys, if you stuck with me this long, this is kind of a frustrating job for me, but... Uh, yeah, what we're looking at is I, I think I'm just going to do a set of injectors. We definitely had number one injector had failed. The other five seem okay. I'm just a big proponent of changing all the injectors when you change injectors. And especially on a 12 valve, it's, the expense isn't that big of a difference. So that's where we're at. I'm going to put six new injectors in the truck and then we'll bleed it. We'll go through that. And we'll see how that all works out. Crush your fingers. Maybe we'll upgrade it just a little bit. We know we got 450 pounds of compression. That'd be good. Um, if you guys are watching some of my other builds, tomorrow we're going to start the power steering uh, setup on Sam's High Boy. Now, I don't know if I'm going to finish that video because it's going to take some time to uh, kind of put it together. Sorry guys, um, but yeah, the uh, power steering on the high boy, it's also getting the sniper fuel injection. Weird thing, out of the blue, I got like three vehicles in here getting the sniper. Actually, right here, I don't know if you guys saw the Edsel. This thing's like sitting on the ground, but it's getting the sniper fuel injection. It's also getting a new motor. You see the heads are off. We're pulling that thing out tomorrow. We got a lot of work to do tomorrow. So, anyways, we got... I don't even know if I'm going to film the Edsel. You guys let me know if you're even interested in the Edsel, but I am definitely filming the uh, the High Boy. It's getting the power steering. It's getting the uh, fuel injection. And then the International, the 56 International, my wife's truck, the Hallmark truck. That thing, the frame's almost completely stripped down, and we're going to build a rotisserie for the frame so that we can put the new 
leaf spring system on it because we've got all new leaf springs um, and then we're also changing the axles so it's going to be kind of a completely different drivetrain. It's going to drive more like a very small light light ton truck. That truck's not really going to be pulling a whole lot anymore. Um, but it is what it is. It's I mean it's getting a little Mercedes diesel. It's it's going to be my wife's little commuter truck that's just going to look pretty and it's going to go to shows and it's going to get great fuel economy doing it and do it very reliably. A lot of people are saying, "Oh, keep it American and all that stuff." And I'm like, "Oh, whatever." I build a lot of stuff with 12 valve Cummins and I build a lot of stuff with all American parts and Honestly, I like the Mercedes diesel. It's a great little diesel, so I'm going to do it. We'll do all American on another build. We'll do all international on another build. Sometimes you just got to change it up, but I'm not the guy who's going to put a Chevy in everything. So sorry about your luck, but hey, thanks for watching guys. I really hope you guys stay tuned and uh, subscribe and all that stuff. So you see the videos coming and I'll catch you on the next video. Thanks guys.